This is part two of migration, and we're going to look at internal migration. Uh, a couple of different types. We have rural to urban. We have counter urbanization, which is people uh, a trend or a migration stream that's going from urban to rural. Then we have stepped migration, which can be urban to urban. It could be rural to urban, then to urban, and it continues like that. We have intra-urban, which is happening within an urban space, so people move into different parts of a city. Okay, rural to urban migration then is happening. Uh, we can take the push and pull factors from section one. So if you haven't done that, please go back over that, um, where we have push and pull factors and intervening obstacles. So let's have a look here at some of the push factors. A couple of the push factors will be similar, but a couple of them will be a little bit different. Usually push factors from urban, rural to urban are a couple of key ones here. Economic is the main driver usually. So we would say that uh, unemployment in the rural area is an issue, especially a lack of potential jobs for um, for people who are highly skilled and maybe the industries aren't in the rural area, right? So there's a limitation to the types of jobs and in industries. So say like farming, mining, forestry, those would be in the primary sector, quaternary and tertiary industry jobs, like service industry and looking in like research and development. Those are going to be in urban spaces usually. Uh, low wages, so if you're working just uh, some jobs, maybe service jobs in the rural area, it might be low paid, uh, unskilled labor. So if you're looking for more higher paid salaries, then perhaps uh, yeah, the cities then have more options for that. Um, economic crashes doesn't really apply so much here. Cost of living is usually actually lower in a rural area than in urban, so people have a better chance actually to say get property for cheaper or the cost of goods might be cheaper. In a HIC though, what we might find is that the cost of living is roughly uh, similar, you know, in terms of day-to-day -day, uh, costs um, than in the, the urban area, but without the high pay. So um, definitely in LICs and MICs, this is not true, right? The cost of living would be very low then in the, the rural area. Uh, social, uh, yeah, it would have a poor school system compared to some of the bigger settlements. Um, you might feel discrimination, but then again, you're probably coming from a smaller neighborhood, but uh, where you're very similar to your neighbors. But if you are, um, yeah, different, you might feel discrimination there, whereas in a big city, you might find communities for you. Um, poor medical and disability facilities, so it is common for people to have to move in there. Corruption in politics, not so much on a difference between rural and urban there. The environment then, we wouldn't see more natural hazards. It could be more hazards to like flooding, let's say, uh, more exposure and potentially then just harder to get help. Um, definitely you're not removed from nature in rural areas and uh, climate change might be affecting you a little bit more outside. So there might be a little less protection against it. You might not have a lot of facilities to, um, you know, keep up against climate change for, or not climate change, but the general climate. So say very high temperatures in rural areas versus air conditioned buildings in urban, right? So those could be a couple of push factors there from our original list. And um, yeah, so we could see that working away there. The pull factors is definitely employment opportunities, higher pay, economic stability, and kind of just more options, which means that like, if you were to say lose a job, there would be more options there. Cost of living is actually higher, uh, usually, and that's not a pull factor. Um, better schools and facilities, non-discriminatory. It's not good to say that you would get away from discriminatory behavior, but there's going to be more communities and maybe more open-minded people towards uh, different religions, sexual orientation, that type of thing. Uh, safety could be seen in both ways. You're closer to police and higher amounts of facilities, CCTV and all that. But overall, there's a higher amount of crimes in urban areas, so that's probably not true for pull factors. However, in the rural areas, you could feel unsafe because you're so isolated. Political structure should be similar enough. The preferred climate, potentially, uh, maybe not at low frequency, but more defenses against natural hazards, so less disasters happening because of that. Um, cleaner environment, unlikely, but maybe in some cases, so you're going from, especially in an MIC, LIC, you might find that and uh, potentially less disease with better healthcare. So with HICs, the causes is definitely mechanization of jobs in rural areas. So people don't need to work out there uh, with mechanizations of jobs. A lot of things like agriculture became very large commercial scale farming where you're farming for profit over many fields using a limited amount of labor sources and high amount of mechanics. 
Manufacturing then is happening in the urban areas. So big secondary industry, tertiary, quaternary industry are all happening in the urban space, which offer higher salaries in a lot of cases. But just overall, there are more jobs, more services like medical care available there as well. Uh, increase of reliance on transport. So what you would find. OK, guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.